The Fayette County Public Schools Board of Education will conduct a virtual meeting on April 27, 2020 in Lexington, Kentucky, 40502. The board has a need to go into closed session pursuant to KRS 61.8101B and C to discuss the future acquisition and sale of real property and proposed or pending litigation. The board will reconvene in open session and if necessary, take any action required pursuant to discussions conducted during closed session. I will now entertain a motion to go into closed session. I'll make a motion to go into closed session. Bless you. Bless you. So second. I had a motion by Mrs. Morris, and I had a second by Ray Daniels. Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0, and we are now in closed session. Aye.
Adam Keen board member Gerald Lovett. All right. So we are now back in open session, and I have a resolution to read. Whereas the Board of Ed Education of Fayette County. By Mr. Daniels. I'll second. A second by Mr. Love. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. We are now back in open session, and I will read a resolution from the Fayette County Board of Education. Whereas the Board of Education of Fayette County is aware that since the 1990s, the pharmaceutical industry has manufactured, distributed, and marketed a variety of opioid pain medications for general use in the treatment of chronic pain conditions, resulting in such medication being the most widely distributed drugs in the United States history. And whereas the manufacture, distribution, and marketing of these opioid drugs has resulted in catastrophic widespread consequences for the people of this nation, including addiction, overdoses, developmental disabilities in children, death, and, ma and major expenditures of money. And whereas the Board of Education believes that the school districts of this nation, including the school district, have suffered significant damages as a result of the national opioid epidemic, including expenditures of public funds to address the impact of this epidemic on students, teachers, and other staff and the taxpayers of the district. And whereas... The number of other school districts have filed or will be filing legal claims as part of the multi-district litigation, MDL, and also the bankruptcy court proceedings of certain defendants named in the claims in the MDL who have filed for bankruptcy protection, bankruptcy litigation, for the purpose of pretrial proceedings, including potential settlements of claims and are seeking to become class representatives in the MDL and in the bankruptcy litigation in an effort to be part of the proposed negotiations class seeking compensation for the impact of this ep epidemic on the named school districts. Number one, that this Board of Education hereby elects to file claims in the MDL and bankruptcy litigation and to join the class action lawsuit settlement class in order to recoup damages inflicted by the opioid epidemic. That, number two, that this Board of Education appoints the following law firms to represent itself and in, represent its interest in the lawsuit. Hughes, Sokol, Piers, Resnick, and D. Denham, which is in Chicago, based out of Chicago, Illinois. Mary, Mary I might be saying this wrong, M-E-H-R-I and Scallett from Washington, D.C. Hen Ritson Law Group from Washington, D.C., Terrell Hogan from Jacksonville, Florida, and Hindi Johnson Vaughn Emery from Louisville, Kentucky. Number three, that the school board, that this board of education directs the superintendent of schools and the administrative staff to cooperate with the appointed attorneys to gather the necessary data and take other required actions necessary to assist law firms in representing the interests of the district. Number four, that the district will expand no funds for its participation in this litigation other than the personal time necessary to gather data necessary to participate in litigation. I will now entertain a motion to adopt the resolution of the Board of Education regarding the participation in opioid litigation. I make the motion to adopt the resolution. I have a motion by Mr. Murphy. I'll second. I have a second by Mrs. Morris. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. At this time, I will, um, we will move into our, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn our special call meeting. So I have a motion by Mr. Love and a second by Mr. Murphy. Is that correct? Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. And at this time, I will welcome everyone to the Fayette County Board of Education Action Meeting, virtual meeting, April 27th, 2020. The time is 6.06 p.m. Pursuant to KRS Chapter 61, notice is hereby given that on April 24th, 2020, the chair of the Fayette County Board of Education called a special meeting of the Board of Education 
for Monday, April 27, 2020 at 6 p.m. The Fayette County Public Schools Board of Education will conduct a virtual meeting on Monday, April 27, 2020 at 6 p.m. This will be a virtual meeting streamed online and the link for the meeting is fcps.net slash virtual meeting. This is the board's monthly regular meeting, but it's specially called because it will be conducted virtually. Please be advised that in a state of proclaimed national emergency and under a similar declaration by the governor, it is not currently feasible for the board to provide meeting room conditions in the face of COVID-19, a highly contagious virus that spreads between people who are in close contact with one another within about six feet. Under those exceptional circumstances in which the Commonwealth of Kentucky is confronting a worldwide pandemic while nevertheless needing to accomplish critical business, public business pursuant to KRS 61.840, the Fayette County Public Schools Board of Education will not provide a primary physical location for the public viewing and will proceed pursuant to KRS 61.826 with the concessions outlined in the Attorney General's OAG 20-05. Thus, the public can access the media via the live stream but cannot physically be present at the meeting. Ms. Daly, will you please take the roll call? Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Raymond Daniels. Present. Mr. Daryl Love. Present. Ms. Christy Morris. Present. Mr. Tyler Murphy. Present. Ms. Stephanie Spires. Present. Thank you. At this time, Mr. Daniels, will you read the mission statement? Yes, Madam Chair. Our mission is to create a collaborative community that ensures all students achieve at high levels and graduate prepared to excel in a global society. Thank you. At this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the, tonight's agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Love and second by Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. When we are able to meet in person, we invite members of our FCPS community to read the proclamations each month, celebrating special occasions and honoring various departments and aspects of our district. Since we are meeting virtually, we have decided instead to film the readings of our proclamations and we'll play these throughout the month. As an example, I would like to share our proclamation celebrating May as Better Speech and Hearing Month. Uh, Bob, can you uh, show the video, cue up the video? Hi, I'm Graham. I have had 10 surgeries to repair my cleft lip palate, and I have completed nine years of speech therapy. A few years ago, I graduated from speech. Do you know that well over 3,000 students currently receive speech, language, hearing, and sign language interpreting services in Fayette County Public Schools? During this time of an ever-changing world, we the students want to thank all the speech, language therapists, audiologists, teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing, sign language interpreters, special education teachers, general education teachers, and most importantly, the parents, for helping us all reach our highest level of learning and communication, so we can. I can listen, I can talk. So I can say what? In wool. Oh, 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 o
Speech and language disorders are among the most common conditions in school-aged children, and more than 3,000 Fayette County public school students are currently receiving speech, language, and hearing services designed to improve their ability to learn, communicate, and lead independent, productive, and fulfilling lives. And whereas untreated communication disorders can lead to problems with reading, writing, learning, overall academic achievement, and social skills. And whereas speech language pathologists, teachers for the deaf and hard of hearing, interpreters and audiologists work in our schools, providing direct services to students and partnering with teachers and families. And whereas speech language pathologists and audiologists conduct hearing screenings and also work with individuals with hearing impairments to develop appropriate communicative skills. And whereas with the assistance of caring speech, language, and hearing professionals, students work on their conversational speech, sound errors, stuttering, or other fluency challenges, improve their receptive and expressive language skills, and find alternate means of communicating. Now therefore, be it proclaimed that the members of the Fayette County Board of Education hereby join the rest of the nation in celebrating May 2020 as Better Speech and Hearing Month. Be it further proclaimed that the members of the school board express their deep appreciation to the speech language pathologists, audiologists, interpreters, teachers for the deaf and hard of hearing, and communication disorder resource specialists for all they do to support our schools and students as integral members of Team FCPS. Be it further proclaimed that this proclamation be spread on the official minutes of the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Special thanks to Social Child Beach Language Resource Specialist Mark Nicole and her team for helping create a tribute. A motion is in order to adopt the proclamation since May 2020 as better speech and hearing. I move to adopt the resolution. Motion by Mr. Murphy. Second. Second by Mr. Morris. Are there any further questions or discussion? On favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes 5 0. A motion is in order to adopt a proclamation celebrating April 27th to May 1st, 2020, as Child Nutrition Employee Appreciation Week. I make a motion to adopt April 27th, May 1st as Child Nutrition Employee Appreciation Week. Second. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Board member spot. I'm working out. Please go back to your room now. Can you hear me? Is this there? Uh, we're still getting some static there as well. Can you hear now? A little better. I'm 
not sure what the issue is. Can I look out the meeting and look again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Try that. Can you all hear me better now? Much better. Okay. Yes, thank you. No, thank you. So at this time, I'm gonna go back to my script. This is Education Week, I believe. Yes. Just a second. All right, so just for clarification, the motion passed 5 0, celebrating May 2020 as better speaking month. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the proclamation to celebrate April 27th to May 1st, 2020, as Child Nutrition Employee Appreciation Week. I'll make that motion again to uh, uh, the proclamation celebrating April 21st to May 1st, the Child Nutrition Employee Appreciation Week. All right, so motion by Mr. Daniels. I will second. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes by zero. A motion is ordered to adopt the proclamations of May 1st to accept to the point as National Physical Education Sports Week. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to adopt uh, the proclamation celebrating May 1st, 2020 as National Physical Education and Sports Week. Second. A motion by Mr. Love, a second by Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion? Am I cutting out again? I cut it out again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Am I cutting out again? Yes. 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 Hold on.
while we're waiting on her, do you, Ray, do you want to move on with these other resolutions or? Uh, yeah, I think that'd be wise. Stephanie we, joins up. Do we but have to wait think, for that man? I'm sorry. Do we have to wait yes, for that? But I, yes, I, I would recommend we wait, but I would also recommend that if there's any sort of difficulty, I wonder, Ray, if you could move through the agenda a little bit, I guess. Um, and that way, the you know the audio is better, and uh, you know it's up to the board. But I to to kind of add on to Tyler's point, I guess mm -hmm. that is if there's still difficulties with. Um, okay, I'll, I'll I'll text that to the board chair now too. And that'll work. Yes, and that's okay with the other board members as long as five are present. Yeah, Ray, and I would just say to also wherever she was when you first started, the reception was great there. So I don't know if she shifted and moved around a little bit, but. Just, yeah, just as a reminder, um, all board members have to be able to be seen and be heard, yeah. so. Right.
Thank you all again for your patience. We have a motion, I believe, for April 27th to May 1st, 2020 to be Child Nutrition Employee Appreciation Week. No, we have moved on. We are had a motion for May 1st. Um, a motion is in order to adopt the proclamation celebrating May 1st to May 7th, 2020 as National Physical Education and Sports Week. And I think we dropped off with Mr. Daniels making a motion. Second, Daryl Love made the motion. Board member Love made the motion. Motion by Mr. Daniels. Second by... Yes, ma'am. I'll second the motion. Mr. Daniels, I can't hear you at this time. Are you muted? or, Or... I should not be. Can you hear me now? I can hear board member Daniel. I can hear him. I can too. Yeah. Can you hear me, board board chair? Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Because yes. I can't hear any of you now. Okay. Shelly, can I finish up the proclamations or we still have to get through this glitch? I think we'll have to get through the, the glitch because Stephanie can't hear us. Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if you should call into someone else's phone and let them hold the microphone up to their mic. Keep your audio on, but mute yourself and call in to somebody else. I guess she can't hear me. Why am I trying, right? (laughs) I forgot she can't hear. And she's calling. All right, I think we are in business. I apologize. It says the internet is having some issues in my area. Um, all right. So we had a motion by Mr. Daniels to make May 1st through 2020 the um, National Fiscal Education Month week. And so do I have a second for that? Second. A second by Mr. Daniels. So the motion was made by Mr. Love? Yes, you're not. Yes, made by Mr. Love. Okay, Ray, you want to second it? Second. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Uh, If there's not any further discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. And and. Motion is in order to celebrate. The motion is in order to adopt the proclamation celebrating May 10th through 16th, 2020, as National Police Week. I'll make a motion to adopt the proclamation celebrating May 10th through 16th, 2020, as National Police Week. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I motion passes five zero. Right. At this time, a motion is in order to adopt the proclamation celebrating May 6, two thousand twenty, as National School Nurse Day. No. Right. Motion to adopt the proclamation celebrating School Nurse Day. Thank I'll you, say. Mr. Murphy, and a second by Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries 5-0. A motion is in order to adopt the proclamation celebrated May 3rd to 9th, 2020th as Teacher Appreciation Week. I'll make a motion to adopt the proclamation celebrating May 3rd through 9th, 2020 as Teacher Appreciation Week. A motion by Mrs. Morris. A second. A second by Mr. Daniels. I mean, Mr. Um, Love. Love. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Um, and at this time, I'd like to turn it over to the superintendent for his report. And again, I appreciate everyone's um, patience with my internet this evening, and I apologize for any delay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, board. Before we begin the superintendent's report tonight, I'd like to personally thank all of our employees and families for working together for the good of our students. As we know, these are challenging times, but Team FCPS has continued to take care of our children, preparing tens of thousands of meals for twice weekly pickup. And I believe we're close to serve, to have, have, been, have served close to 200,000 meals since March 16th. Delivering meals to our medically fragile children, providing 3,100 backpacks of food and household items for families a week keeping our clinics open and serving the mental health needs of students and families during this pandemic. I am also proud of the way our schools and families have embraced the non-traditional instruction and responded with creative ways to stay connected during this time. I heard recently about a teacher at Deep Springs who bought an idea from author Jeff Brown and his book, Flat Stanley, and mailed a flat picture of herself to all of her students so they could write about the adventures they're having at home. As we look ahead to National Physical Education and Sport Week, I would like to share a video put together by Tate Creek Elementary School physical education teacher, Daniel Hill, about all the ways our physical education teachers are encouraging our students from afar. Bob, can you queue up the video? Hello, Fayette County Public Schools, and happy PE and Sport Week. Hope your old Kentucky home is healthy and happy. Several PE teachers and health teachers from across the district wanted to show you how they are engaging themselves and their students on being healthy at home during NTI.
what a great video. And uh, these videos are going to be on our website. Um, and so you can view them um, all month long and, and even longer. So, you know, really excited about that. Under my superintendent's report, I'm going to ask our chief operating officer, Byron Thompson, to present the monthly construction progress report. Uh, before he does that, I'm going to let our viewing public know that we will will be resuming grass cutting and lawn care and maintenance service um, and, and uh, provided there's no inclement weather. And so uh, we'll be back at it. Just received an email uh, from one of our uh, uh, community members about the grass at particular high school. And so we're on it and uh, wanted to let everyone know that. So Myron, I turn it over to you, big guy. Thank you, Superintendent Kalk. Uh, Bob, if you could pull up the executive summary, or Amy. Uh, similar to what we did last month, uh, we're gonna have the full PowerPoint available on our website. Tonight, we're just gonna kind of cover the high points of the various projects, uh, starting with the C uh, STEAM and Success Academies. Uh, the change orders to date are about $68,000, and we're still scheduled to complete uh, in October, mid-October, uh, roughly uh, halfway there, uh, with no change to that date. Uh, for the work completed for the month of March, uh, continued the building site demolition as required for new work. Uh, the building demolition included removing the existing uh, porte cochere and uh, the steeple, as well as the front roof structure. Uh, the site stormline installation continued on the west end of the building. Our masonry work is near completion on the interior of the building, uh, with the exception of the lintels and the brick toothing on the exterior. Uh, our structural still has continued with our tubular skylighting and miscellaneous openings. Metal uh, stud wall framing was complete in area C and continued in areas A and B. Gypsum board uh, hanging and finishing continued in areas B and C and spray foam installation is near complete. Uh, area B painting has began as well as priming complete with 50% of the first coat down. Our geothermal line installation continued. Our mechanical electrical plumbing under slab rough ends are 95% complete and our HVAC ductwork and piping has continued along with plumbing and electrical rough ends and exterior sprinkler work. For the month of April, our building and site demolition has continued as required with <coughs> limited uh, interior demolition. Our site concrete has began as well as structural steel installation to continue at miscellaneous openings. Our roofing has began with tubular skyline installation to be installed with terrazzo installation to begin as well. A ceramic tile to begin in area B restrooms. Our metal stud wall framing has continued in area A. Sound bats and gypsum board topping out of uh, walls continues in areas A and C. Ceiling grid installation to begin and to be completed in area B and C commons area. And the first coat of paint will be completed in areas B and C commons as well. Our geothermal line installation will continue. Our mechanical electrical uh, under slab rough ends will be complete, as well as our HVAC ductwork piping and grills and diffusers will allow for the ceiling grid. Our plumbing and electrical rough ends will continue as well as light fixtures uh, following the light grid. Uh, for the new uh, 450 Park Place administrative building, uh, no a uh, one change order with zero dollars thus far. Uh, again, we we're supposed to wrap that project up in September, uh, roughly 22% done. Uh, the work for March, we had our demo for all of our floors complete with the mechanical electrical systems from mechanical rooms is nearing completion. Wall framing has begun on all floors with patching of walls where offices uh, doors have been removed and begun. Uh, electrical and plumbing up ends uh, within the wall framing has begun as well. Uh, the trenching for the underground electrical telecommunication conduits has began and forms are in place and ready for concrete and the cooling tower supports. Uh, for this month, we've continued with wall framing, uh, patching and repairing of walls, uh, mechanical and electrical plumbing rough ends, uh, exterior electrical trenching and installation of new conduits. We began our installation of the new mechanical and electrical plumbing equipment in the main mechanical room and we poured concrete for our cooling tower supports. Uh, for our security vestibules, uh, the projects are moving forward. Uh, there are change orders, five to date, uh, wrapping those up in December. Uh, construction is ongoing uh, at Dixie, Scapa, Lafayette, and the Preschool Center and Southside Technical Center, as well as Picadome. All of those are roughly 95% complete. We've had a uh, punch list to go through on those. Morton is roughly 15% complete. Uh, we've had pre-construction meetings held at Harrison with construction starting today. And uh, Henry Clay, our pre-construction meeting will be held on May the 11th with construction currently scheduled to start June 8th. Uh, we have seven sites fully complete. All right, thank you, Myron. And that concludes the superintendent's report. And at this time, I turn the meeting back over to you, Madam Chair.
All right. Thank you very much. And at this time, I will um, ask for, we will move on to routine ma matters. Um, it says I will call for the approval of routine matters. So is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the, the minutes from the board meetings. Thank you for clarifying what I was doing. Um, yeah, so the motion is in order to approve um, the minutes from our, um, Ms. Morris, can you clarify the dates on those minutes yes. that I'm asking you to approve right now? to approve the board minutes from March 9th, 2020, as well as March 23rd, 2020. Thank you. So the motion has been made by Mrs. Morris. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent item. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the consent items as listed. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Love. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Daniels. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. At this time, we will move on to the action items this evening. And I believe the first action item is an action regarding the instructional calendar. Superintendent Cox, would you like to give some more information on this? Yes, Madam Chair. The first action item on tonight's agenda is the approval of an amended instructional calendar in light of our extended school closure in support of the governor's efforts to slow the spread of COVID-19. The information this evening is different than what we discussed at our planning meeting since in-person classes have been canceled for the rest of the school year. And since the Kentucky Department of Education has issued guidance about counting non-traditional instructional days as seven hour days. So I'd like to ask our director of people personnel, Mr. Steve Hill to come out to um, do the presentation. I'll turn it over to Steve. Good evening, this is uh, Steve. I hope everybody's well. Uh, sorry, I just ran up from upstairs, so I'm out of breath a little bit. Um, uh, so tonight I'm gonna present the uh, instructional calendar um, and the amendments. Uh, you go to the next one, please. So just a brief agenda, what we're going to look at real quick is uh, the requirements for the 2019 instructional calendar. Those have changed a little bit since the last time we talked. Our current re reality, just touch on that quickly, and then the final recommendation of converting May 19th to an NTI instructional day and then making our last day of instruction on May 27th. Uh, you can go to the next, next one, please. Okay, so um, guidance from last week on April 20th. The commissioner and um, the governor came down with uh, recommendations to superintendents. Waiver of the 170 day instructional day requirement was waived. Um, districts still needed to meet the 1,062 instructional hours. And it also allowed for districts to extend NTI, like uh, Superintendent Cox said, to um, seven hour NTI days. So that allowed us to make some additional amendments to the calendar. Thank you. So just, just for public awareness and for community awareness, if we if we made no changes at all, and I, I'm speaking to this because I wanna make sure everybody understands, I know we're going a little bit later than some of the surrounding districts and there's a lot of reasons for that, but but the re main reason is, is because we had um, 11 days missed due to the COVID and for illness. That would have pushed us to June 10th and you can see that as the final day. So this is what our current reality is had we pushed through um, and through with the board support, we're, we're gonna be able to be creative and be able to pull this back. Um, if you go to the next one, please. The next calendar, please, I'm sorry, the next screen. Oh, you did, my bad. So this is, um, right here is the, by using our currently banked instructional time, and also with the addition to creating seven hour instructional days for NTI, that allowed us to, uh, accumulate more instructional hours towards the end goal of 1,062 hours. 
Uh, so we meet that threshold on May 27th for our schools. And so we will be able to, and our original release day was May 26th. So we're actually right there um, on it. Last day was, for teachers will be the 28th. That will put us at 168 instructional days, just for transparency, that's where we're at. Um, and then the last, so the last day of instruction, like I said, would be May 27th. And you'll see reflected on this, it uh, converted the May 19th to uh, an instructional day as well. And then remember that day is the um, election, primary election day that is no longer in existence until later in the summer. Um, so next, next one, please. And so the recommendation is to use bank instructional hours, convert election day, and uh, the next screen, please. And I'll take any questions or comments uh, that you might have. If there is no further discussion, a motion is in order to amend the 2019-2020 instructional calendar in order to meet the state requirement of 1,062 instructional hours. And as a result, May 19th will be converted to an instructional NTI day. Is there, um, has there been any discussion? Because I know that there are uh, many families uh, and uh, staff as well look at this uh, calendar and think uh, we have a whole nother, you know, four weeks of NTI. It's been a source of frustration and stress for a lot of folks. And I understand we have the 1062 obligation um, has there been a talk uh, about among our schools about um, uh, providing building in some review days or something to balance that workload that our families and our staff are filling, especially since we're stretching this out to May 27th? Board Member Murphy, um, I think you saw some of my nonverbals there, but um, yes, and that would be sort of latter part of the um, school year to draw us to a close uh, to begin to uh, do some review. And just as you would, um, similarly, not the same as if you had students face to face. So we're looking to um, to do review and kind of wrap up, et cetera, to bring it to, to bring it to a closure. Great question. And that's um, something that um, our NTI team is We'll be sharing and continue to communicate with our principals and teachers and families. I, I will throw in just as a parent, I know there's been a lot of communication with principals and um, a lot of modifications have been made. I have four, four different grades at four different, or two different schools. So I kind of get, I think, some of what's going on. Um, and I know that they've made modifications. I also think that the staff has done a really good job of kind of making Fridays days of really um, catch up to make sure that a child doesn't move into the next week without understanding really what that week was about and, and stuff like that. That's kind of my own personal experience. Um, is there any further discussion or are we ready if, to move forward with the motion? And this is just clarification. We may uh, we brought it up at the planning meeting, um, but especially with the change to May 27th, because our our uh, most of our certified staff, especially our teaching staff, work contracted days. My understanding is that that time will be flexed, similar to the week we took off at the beginning of the closure. Is that correct? That's correct. And Jennifer Dyer is here, and she can weigh in uh, and expound if necessary. But yes. Good evening. The day after students is traditionally the closing day, which is not considered flex, but the rest of the days after that would be flex. And we will work with our principals to ensure that any closing activities that must be done in person will be done adhering to the uh, social distancing guidelines. Okay, thank you. Hold on just a second. My apologies. I had a child doing what they were not supposed to be doing. All right. If there is no further discussion, a motion is in order to amend the 2019-2020 instructional calendar in order to meet the state requirement of 1,062 instructional hours. As a result, May 19th will be converted to an instructional NTI day. 
I'll make a motion to amend the 2019-2020 instructional calendar as reflected. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Is there a second? Board Member Love, I second. Thank you, Board Member Love. So we have a motion by Ms. Morris, a second by Mr. Love. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. This time we'll move on to the application of a waiver of administrative regulation option. Um, Mr. Clark, would you like to speak to this? Yes, Madam Chair, and also want to thank Jennifer and Steve for the last presentation. Um, our next action item is also in response to the impact that COVID-19 has had on our students and families. I'm going to ask our Chief of High Schools, Mr. James McMillan, to walk us through this proposal. James. Thank you so much, uh, Superintendent Cock. So um, just to kind of bring everybody up to speed, um, you know, the Chiefs had a discussion today about how, if, you know, if we're grading and assessing students like we did when they're in person, it's a, a quote that was sent out about how all we're really assessing is privilege. And so that sort of speaks to what um, I'm coming before you today after uh, running this through uh, Superintendent Cock and our executive leadership team. Um, I think you guys are aware that uh, – all Kentucky school districts can make a request of the Kentucky Board of Education to waive most Kentucky administrative regulations. And so I did, uh, and you guys should have a copy of the waiver. Um, I do also have a quick PowerPoint. I'm going to go to the next slide. <clears throat> to kind of bring you up to speak on what we've done so far at the high school level, um, the, the uh, guidance coming from KDE has uh, been to have some grace with our, our seniors um, and so uh, all of our schools, except Henry Clay, I believe, are on a 26, uh, actually I know that, are on a required 26 credits. They're on a block schedule. Henry Clay is not and have the, uh, the, the 22 minimum requirements of credits. And so our uh, five block scheduling um, schools, so that's all of those but Henry Clay, have those credits to uh, the state minimum of 22 for some of our seniors. And again, this is a case by case basis. Um, again, based off the guidance that's come from KDE, specifically because the supports that are typically there for some of these students who are at risk of dropping out or um, aging out, they're just not there right now. And so um, I do also want to point out option two, which is what the waiver is for. If you'll go to the next slide. Um, there has been some uh, guidance, and this is an option that uh, KDE has also um, put out there. And so after discussing um, the waiver to the Kentucky Board of Education, um, which, again, you guys do have a copy of, and I can uh, read a little bit from that here in a second, I am requesting that uh, uh, the board um, allow us to turn in this waiver to uh, – to basically lower our graduation requirements to 15, which if you look at the difference between option one and option two, that is just for, um, that is just waiving the seven elective credits. But I want to point out something that's really important. This is not for all students. And as you will see in the waiver, if you guys have a copy of it, and I'll pull it up right quick on my computer. Um, as I say in the waiver, um, and this is the rationale, and I'll read that to you real quick. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, school closings, students who were at risk of dropping out or aging out of high school have become even more prone to not completing graduation requirements and thus leaving high school without a high school diploma. This waiver is to help support our students reach the, gradua reach the graduation requirements and place them on a path to success for transition from high school. I go on in the waiver to explain how we're going to do that. And again, um, just... I thought the board may want to know. Currently in Fayette County, we have approximately um, 294 um, students at the high school level that are um, 19 and over. And again, um, I'm requesting that the board consider this waiver that I can send it on to KBE um, so uh, we can help these students who uh, haven't had that one-on-one uh, -on -one attention and have been impacted by COVID-19 and the pandemic. I'll take any questions. Oh, Mr. McMillan, I just want to say that I appreciate, too, that you pointed out that this is for our older students and such, um, because one of the things I have shared in the past is that sometimes I have had foster children who somehow managed to accumulate the requirements, um, but they aren't, and they're younger because where they've moved around or whatever. And so one of my concerns sometimes 
I, I guess my fear was that people got this and then they got out. But I like how you made sure that this is really protecting those students who needed this and that it does not open the gates for all students so that those who maybe have this can still come back next year and have their senior year. So thank you for that. Is there any further discussion? Can you go back to the presentation, okay. the last slide you showed of the, let me see. So this is, it, it would be option two, is that what you? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Board Member Murphy, what I have, do you have, do you guys have a copy of the waiver? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you can see there, um, again, it's just re removing the requirements of the seven electives, um, waiving those electives, if you will. Um, and then the support that is going to be uh, embedded with the counselor and the one-on-one -on -one, um, counseling services that we're going to have. Um, obviously, uh, we have been working with teaching and learning and the, and the, the high school principals. We know that uh, the, sc the school year technically um, ends May 27th now, but th this is going to allow us to work all the way through June and July under this option to, in order to make sure that we have some extension for those students that need it um, and, and, and can reach that, that credit mark. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any further questions or discussions? Just to clarify, you said that most of our high schools, except for Henry Clay, were currently at, at 24 credits. Is that correct? Um, they are at 26. Uh, uh, Henry Clay already, because of its schedule, uh, is 22 credits. That is their, uh, they are already at the state minimum. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. If there is no further discussion, a motion is in order to approve a waiver for the Kentucky Board of Education to implement option two, minimum graduation requirements, waiving electives, 15 credits. This would be for students 18 to 20 at risk of dropping out or of aging out of high school. Do I have a motion? I move to accept the waiver application. A motion by Mr. Murphy. Second. A second by Mr. Daniels. Do I have any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next, we have the 2020-2021 schedule of regular board member meeting. Mr. Koch, would you like to say anything about this? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks again, board. Thanks, James, for the last presentation. This is routine matters we take care of every spring. We set our schedule of board meetings for the upcoming year. Uh, Ms. Daly's on here so if you have any questions um, as you review the, uh, the regular meetings calendar. Seeing no questions, a motion is in order for approval of the schedule of regular Board of Education meeting dates for 2020 to 2021. I move to approve the uh, board calendar as presented, the board meeting Thank calendar. you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. So we have a motion by Mr. Murphy. I'll second. second. A second by Mrs. Morris. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. At this time, we have, I believe, some information on our copier lease agreement, Mr. Koch. That's correct, Madam Chair, and thanks again, Board. Our next item for your consideration is a contract from our printing department with Canon Solutions America for copiers. And our Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Myron Thompson, is prepared to respond to any questions that you may have. This is uh, basically a state price contract, and uh, we are able to. Uh, we ran into some software issues, so we're able we're able to cancel the existing contract and enter into a new contract at a cheaper price for more functionality. If there are no questions, a motion is in order to approve the Canon Color Copier contract. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the Canon Color copier contract. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lev. Any, second. do you have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Daniels. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Motion passes 5-0. And now at this time, I believe we have the monthly financial report. From that is, oh. oh, go on. I was going to say that's correct, Madam Chair. I want to thank board members for uh, the vote on the uh, copier contract. And at this time, I'm going to ask our chief financial officer, Mr. John White, and director of finance, uh, finance Mr. Rodney Jackson, to present our monthly financial report. I turn it over to you, Rodney. Good evening. The general plan review for the month of March 2020 is as follows. Next. As you can see, it reflects a fund balance of $130.5 million approximately. Revenue is $401.5 million. Expenses are $271 million. As indicated by Blue Arrow. Next. Doing a general fund overview comparing years, the 2018-19 year to 2019-20 year. You would notice that they are practically the same at $130.5 million. Next. Total revenue amongst all funds is $580.5 million. Total expenditure is approximately $390 million. Net fund balance overall is $190.5 million. Next. This is a summary of all funds, fund one through fund 7,000. You can see it ties to the $190.5 million. Next. With the beginning balance included, revenue for 2020 is 401.5. For 2019, it was 371.5. That's $30 million higher this year than last year. Next. Taking out the beginning balance is $330 million for this year and $319 million for last year. That's $11 million difference. Next. Total expenses this year, $271 million versus last year at the same time, $241 million. Thus, expenses are up $30 million compared to the same time last year. This is primarily due to vendor payments being up $3.7 million and salaries and fringes up $12.7 million. The biggest jump is related to the timing of fund transfers in excess of $13.6 million for construction and renovation projects comparing 2019 and 2020. Next. The balance sheet encumbrance summary reflects general fund balance sheet assets $140 million, liabilities $9 million. Our financial position remains sound in relation to assets versus liabilities. Encumbrances represent purchase orders for goods and services not yet received. Thus, they become an expense when the purchase order items are received and paid. The encumbrance balance at the end of March is $6.5 million. If all these encumbrances became reality, our fund balance would be $6.5 million less or roughly $124 million. We have communicated the extended purchase order cutoff date of May 15th, 2020 for planning for the ending of the school year and so forth. Our goals to research and pay liquidate all purchase orders significantly prior to June 30th, year end closed. Next. Um, Marcy Thompson Fund, $250,184. Dorothy Smith, $19,342. And John Price Fund, $40,121. All other funds have been reconciled and sent to Bluegrass Community Foundation as received. Are there any questions or concerns? Next. Has has there been, I was interested on the expenditure front for it to be as high as it was compared to 2019. It, have we seen any reduction of expenditure because of the closure or is that marginal compared to the other increase in cost to vendors and staffing? Well, we won't start to see or be able to tell until April hits. I mean, as you know, this all started around March 16th, which was halfway through March that time. So um, usually the expenses related to utilities and everything is on a delayed basis. Um, any POs and everything we've been working through will start to come. We'll see how the effect of those things versus purchasing and not purchasing and so forth. So we start to see more in April about where we're going to end up with this. Any Thank other you. questions? Do we have any other questions for the staff at this time? If not, no. a motion is, so. Oh. No, I was going to make a motion, motion to approve the monthly financials as presented. <laughs> Thank you, my Mr. Motion made by Mr. Daniels. Second. Second by Mr. Love. Any further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. This time I'll turn it over to you, Superintendent Cox, for informational items. <laughs> you got it, Madam Chair. I apologize. Thank you, board members. That was the last of our action items. We also have several informational items for the board's review this evening, including the school activity fund report, the personnel changes for April, and the position control document. If there are no questions about any of those items, that will conclude the board agenda for this evening. Do we have any additional board requests this evening? If not, a motion is in order to make the agenda dates April 27, 2020, on which action has been taken at this meeting as part of the minutes as is copied in the minutes verbatim. A move. A motion by Mr. Murphy. Second. Do I have a second by Mr. Daniels? Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. And at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion by Mr. Daniels, a second by Mr. Love. Any further discussion? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And, um, me opposed. Motion passes 5-0 and we are adjourned. We got it. Thank you, board members. Ray, I'll join you on the call.